In Oregon, we see the beauty of our state with its forests, fertile valleys, coastal communities, and waterways. We know the land is a gift that supports us and allows us to be productive. These gifts are the source of our economic and social well-being. We also know that to be productive requires energy, and we know that our energy comes from many sources, foreign and local. Some of the most commonly used energy sources of the past have become recognized as troublesome because of dwindling supplies and pollution. We have been slow to recognize the problem and failed to actively build bridges to a sustainable future. We have watched our leaders ineffectively tackle the problem. Now we find that multinational corporations are ready to reap a financial harvest by capitalizing on the inability of our leaders to envision a viable bridge into a sustainable future. The corporations want to make use of our communities, our resources, and our land to build a bridge to nowhere. On February 6, 2008, farmers, fishermen, environmentalists, and landowners gathered at the state capitol to let our representatives know there are better roads into the future. Who's excited to be down in Salem? What are we going to stop? What are we going to stop? Welcome to Salem! My name is Brent Foster, I'm the Executive Director for Columbia Riverkeeper and on behalf of all the various groups that went into planning today, I welcome you and thank you. This is a big moment because a year ago if you had said LNG, most of us wouldn't even known what it meant. And today we got hundreds of folks at Salem uh, and supporting us in the communities along the pipelines and around the terminals that are planned that are all saying one thing. No, no to LNG! LNG is bad for Oregon on ways that you're going to hear today from exacerbating the impacts of global warming to uh, eminent domain taking property of uh, farms and uh, forest landowners along the pipeline route. Not mine! Putting communities at risk. Putting communities at risk along the pipeline. These, these, this LNG project puts us in exactly the opposite wrong direction, which is a line that I took uh, directly from our Secretary of State, Bill Bradbury, who I'm going to introduce to you first today. Uh, we're here this morning because we are deeply concerned about the safety and the sensibility of liquefied natural gas. And I'm here to say that I am opposed to bringing an LNG terminal to the state of Oregon. Yeah. The thing that's so amazing to me is we don't need anywhere near as much natural gas as being proposed in these LNG terminals. Even if just one of these three proposed terminals, uh, any any one of those three, any each of the, any one of those three terminals would meet our annual demand more than meet our annual demand for natural gas. So you say, well, hmm. so where do you think the rest of it is going? <laughs> California. So let me be clear. I do not think that Oregon should become the pusher enabling California's dependence on fossil fuel. Will this really address Oregon power needs or are we simply sending power to California? That's a serious question that demands a serious answer. We haven't heard a good answer. Well, these enormous ships that occupy the entire Columbia River Channel have another commercial navigation. 
That's a serious question that deserves a serious answer. We have not heard that answer. The governor can stop this process. The governor can halt the LNG terminals. They need water permits. The governor and his agencies can deny the water permits. Remember, that's not the end of it. As Secretary Bradbury said, we need to think about, we need to make commitments about what we do instead. Yes, LNG terminals produce a fossil fuel that produces carbon emissions. But, as Secretary Bradbury said, even LNG natural gas produces less carbon than coal. And we still need to get that we need to get off coal, right. which provides now 50% of our electricity. Not mine. Not, in the United States as a whole, we are all one country, coal provides 50% of our electricity. So how do we get off coal? We need to make a major commitment. We need to make a commitment to conservation, to insist that new buildings are energy efficient. A recent study by the McKinsey Group said that we could cut carbon emissions in the United States by 28% with more energy efficient buildings. We need to insist on that. We need to fully develop our renewable energy capacity. And remember, that's a big job. Truly renewable energy other than hydro is only about 3% of our energy in this country now. It's going to take a lot of work to get to where we need to be. So. We need to develop our wind resources in Oregon, which we're doing. We need to develop wave energy off the Oregon coast, which we're doing. But we also need to remember that in order to make our whole country a coal-free country, we need bigger investments. Scientific American says this month, or last, last month, that with a $420 billion commitment over the next 40 years, we could develop solar power, particularly in the Southwest, sufficient to satisfy two-thirds of our energy needs. That's the kind of investment we need to make. Oregon's doing well on wind. We're not even in the top 20 states in wind potential. The big wind states are those big square states in the middle of the country like Wyoming. And in order to take full advantage of that potential, we need to do big things, like building new transmission lines from Wyoming to California to carry the power from where it is to where the people are.